Today we're going to talk about two Dallas area zip codes ranked as the hottest U.S. housing markets in 2024. My name is Trevon. I work with Century 21, Mike Bowman, a DFW Metroplex real estate agent. I was just going through Google today and noticed these um, and, and noticed this article. I felt honestly, I was surprised based on the area, but not surprised also. I think I was more surprised just on how highly ranked these areas were, but they're definitely, you know, uh, most clients that I have, these are cities that they would want to be in. So yeah, let's get into it. The DFW housing market is growing hotter day by day. And two zip codes particularly were listed in Realtor.com's new survey of the hottest housing markets in America. And those two markets are going to be Bedford and Flower Mound. To come up with 2024 list, Realtor.com analyzed the number of unique viewers per property on Realtor.com from January through June and the number of days a listing remained active on the site during that period. Uh, Bedford's zip code ranked number 37 on the list. The median price of a home in this area is about 425000 during the first half of 2024. Homes in the city spent a median 25 days on the market before being sold, and listings in the zip code were viewed 2.3 times more often than other listings in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I mean, that's not surprising. Like When you go and look at Bedford on the map, its location is pretty prime. It, it's got great highway access. Uh, pretty close to the DFW airport, and then it's pretty close to one of the major lakes we have here as well, um, really somewhat in the middle, you know, in between Euless, Hearst, and Colleyville, where uh, prices are definitely shooting up. And I think a lot of that correlates with the Colleyville. Colleyville is pretty expensive to live in. The average price is definitely going to be much higher. So as people want to live in that area, get priced out, you know, Bedford, Watauga, um, these are, these areas are going to be the areas that they go to, you know, South Lake Keller. But even then, South Lake Keller, you're you're getting into a pretty high price points um, on average. So yeah, doesn't surprise me, you know, doesn't surprise me. And when you do open houses in Bedford, they're typically pretty busy with people just saying, you know, we love the area, we love the area, we love the area. So that's what doesn't surprise me. Um, just surprised me how high on the list it is. Bedford's rapid expansion is bolstered by new restaurant openings in the in the city and a highly anticipated new HEB supermarket that's scheduled to open in 2026. Ranking three spots behind Bedford at number 40 of the hottest U.S. markets in 2024 was Flower Mound. Homes in this area were viewed 2.4 times more than typical DFW listings and the home sold after a median 28 days on the market. The median price of a home in Flower Mound from January to June came out, came out to about 584000 um, which, you know, uh, Flower Mound's got a, a wide range. Beautiful city. It's got it all except for just skyscrapers, right? It's got shopping, great food. Um, you, you're really close to a lake. Uh, schooling is, is, is top-notch as well. And you really can get a really high-end home or, 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 or luxury home for a fair price, quote-unquote, right? Compared to how much it's going to cost you in Colleyville or how much it's going to cost you in South Lake. So your, your range in Flower Mound definitely goes all the way up to, you know, your, your 3 millions, 4 millions, all the way down to, uh, you know, your 480s, your 475s. So... Definitely a lot of opportunity, and Flower Mound is known for being one of the most livable small cities in America, thanks to its affordability and abundance of new coffee shops, bookstores, restaurants, and outdoor recreational living. Dallas area real estate growth isn't limited to mid-cities. Two additional zip codes in North Texas and Forney and Aubrey were among the hottest housing markets in 2023, where, um, and, I'll be, and I'll be honest, Forney, uh, they, they got beat up this last year. You know, people that moved in there 2022, 2023, um, I guess there was this expectation that it was going to be a lot hotter area than it was. And now that people are, you know, moving or not, ex you know, it wasn't meeting their expectations. You find a lot of people that bought over there that are trying to sell now and they're actually losing money. So, which it happens, you know, especially if you're going to buy a home within a year and try to sell it. Most of the times, you know, you're not going to get that quickly. You know, equity is not going to jump in that quickly, depending on how you bought, when you bought. So, it's tough, but Aubrey's in a much better place. Um, it's definitely a different price point as well. Um, larger lots, bigger homes, or and, and more expensive homes. In, in a way, in like its its location, you know, of course, Prosper, Salina, Salina, however you want to pronounce it, pretty expensive areas to live in. So 
Aubrey's becoming, you know, the next Little Elm. You know, there are high price points coming in that area, uh, but they're not yet in the, you know, 900 pluses and, and million pluses. Of course, you can find it, but yeah, Aubrey is definitely growing pretty rapidly and, and, and I think is in a much better position rather than Forney, Texas. But of course, it's going to depend on the price point you're looking at. So though the DFW housing market is hotter than other parts of the state, Realtor.com noted that the buyer interest in the general American South has waned in 2024 due to affordability issues stemming from uh, the pandemic. Uh, there were no there were no southern zip codes that made it into the top 10 hottest housing markets this year. And some of those markets, it looks like a lot of activities happen in Ohio, uh, Missouri, New Jersey, and Massachusetts. You know, Massachusetts got three different cities on here, and New Jersey has two different cities, and Ohio is number one uh, for Gahanna. Gahanna. So that's where the movement is happening. But from what it looks like as far as macro data and the larger companies, there is going to be so much growth in the DFW Metroplex, especially in the commercial side, the multifamily development side. And typically, that's kind of how I, you know, they're not the same. They're not comparable. But when you see big money going into an area, typically housing follows or the trend is set for things to be happening in this area because typically large money isn't going to waste their investments. The whole idea is making money. So they're in this to do that. So apartment construction has been skyrocketing Dallas-Fort Worth, and the metro is on the brink of surpassing New York City, uh, boasting the second highest rate of new apartment construction in the nation. Absolutely wild that it's going to compete with New York City. Um, from the report from August 7th, analyze new apartment construction data across 369 U.S. Metro metropolitan statistical areas. For the purpose of the study, only apartment buildings containing 50 or more units were included. Any U.S. metros with fewer than 300 units or fewer than two properties build or fewer than two property buildings were excluded. So there's going to be quite a bit that were excluded, but Rent Cafe's data estimated Dallas area developers are expected to build a staggering 32,000 total apartments and uh, 32,000 total apartment units in 2024, which is just three fewer units than the number one ranking New York City's anticipated goal. In just Dallas Prosper alone, 5,200 units are expected to be, are, are estimated to be complete by the end of the year. Good grief. I know if you're in the commercial side, this is definitely going to help you and you're going to make a killing in the next you know, few years if you're on the right team. Um, but that's also an, an, an extensive amount of growth that is coming to the area where if you think that we're slowing down, we're definitely not. Uh, so Dallas has, Dallas has topped the charts for the highest apartment construction rate between 2020 and 2022 with 76,000 new apartment units opening around Dallas-Fort Worth since the beginning of the so-called pandemic building boom. Reports attribute booming, booming construction rates to DFW's steady population growth, the area's thriving job market, its relative affordability in comparison to similar sized US metros, and its desirability among major employers. And, uh, and I'll put some up here, but there's some large companies um, coming to the tech, you know, coming to this area, yeah, there's going to be some I put on this list there, you know, like Sherman, not really DFW, but it will connect eventually. I mean, the, the massive amount of growth that is coming is going to bring so much, so much population growth and so much uh, infrastructure growth. Fort Worth is expected to build the second highest number of new apartments in the North Texas, totaling 4,600 units. Other large suburbs like Frisco and McKinney will complete an estimated 2,000 and 1,600. By the end of the, by the end of 2024, incredible. Um, so here's how many apartments, here's how many new apartments are expected to be built by the end of 2024, which is like five months, which is just incredible. So Grand Prairie's got above a thousand, Melissa, Texas above a thousand, Plano above a thousand, Garland above a thousand, Arlington above a thousand, Prosper above a thousand, and then Louisville, Denton, Richardson, Sacchi. North Richland Hills, Irving, Carrollton, and Burleson are right underneath it. So that is that is quite quite a bit of growth coming to the area. And as someone that's a real estate agent, of course, that's exciting for me. But also gives you an indication of what is happening as far as the um, 
commercial multifamily development and infrastructure that is going to be put in and surrounding these areas where they're building all this. So definitely something you want to keep up with. And our DFW Metroplex is growing. But is it a buyer's or seller's market? I think it's both, right? Of course, depending on where you're at, um, every neighborhood is going to be different. There's some neighborhoods with less inventory than others, and there's some with way more inventory than others and a lot more competition um, in that regard. So homes are sitting a lot longer and sellers are not wanting to go so low. But hey, if you buy your home in 2010, most likely you've got double equity or a good amount where you're starting to see some sellers still bend a little bit or give a little bit or give a little bit to a degree. We're going to check out this Metro Techs um, article. Um, anyone can get this information just reading and uh, we're going to react to it basically, give our perspective. So supply is way up, prices dropped a little bit, and sales are up. What comes next? Things are changing ever so slightly in the Dallas-Fort Worth housing market. July saw median home prices drop nearly 2% and sales jump nearly 5% year over year. So year over year, prices fell for the second straight month. A national real estate group estimates 12-month price drop is one of the most substantial in the nation. It comes after months of increasing inventory. So where does this leave buyers and sellers? There are hints that the market is looking better for buyers. Interest rates are continuing to drop, but all may not be as it seems. Prices are still high, and there's concern that, that the supply bump could be coming from more expensive homes hitting the market. And that's a pretty solid take. You know, when you're looking in these areas like Keller, Texas, South Lake, Texas, Colleyville, Texas, Flower Mound, Texas, Frisco, you know, your North Dallas, even your West Dallas and South Dallas to a degree, and your Plano area, anything that's a new build, um, in most cases is up, you know, it's above 400,000. And if it's in one of these areas where your median prices are a lot higher, it's, you know, it's above 800,000. You know, I can definitely see where, yeah, most of the homes I'm seeing that are newly built in these areas are way more expensive, um, or at least on the higher end side. So that's a definite, that's a very good take um, and, and, and a good perspective to see from. Now, of course, you can still find some opportunity. South Fort Worth, Hazlitt, um, you know, your North Lake area, even then those are pushing above the fours or at the fours, uh, depending on what neighborhood you look. So would, I, would, it, would it be affordable living? But it's, it, it's not outstanding prices, but I can see that. And I, I, I don't know if you would call those expensive homes, right? Would you say a home that's 350000 and up is expensive? Probably. All right, so the data. Uh, median price of a home in DFW in July was around 400000 That's a 1.7% drop from last year. It's also a decrease from the month before. The median price in June was four hundred five. dollars uh, This figure includes existing single-family homes, condos, townhomes, and other similar properties sold last month. Median sales price in DFW last month was 410000 down 1% year over year. Remax data shows DFW median home prices falling Falling from nearly 409,000 last July to 400,000, 2.2% drop. Closings were up 4.6 over last July, according to the Metroplex. According to Metrotex, sales are a lagging indicator reflecting that, reflecting what was on the market 60 to 90 days earlier. Active listings are up nearly 49% from last year, which is the highest since October 2012. So a lot more competition out there. Average home. Average days on the market is about 78 days, so in DFW at least. So like that's what I'm saying. If your home is sitting longer than 30, 60 days, you know, it, it may not be the end, especially if you're still getting quite a bit of attention. You know, maybe the offers just weren't strong enough, but you know, the average days on the market is definitely going higher. Dallas County sales and median prices were pretty much flat. The median home price was 360. Uh, a decrease less than 1%, um, 1,800 closed sales, a less than 1% increase. Collin County's median home price was 498, near 3% drop from last year, at about 1,500 closed sales, a 4.4% increase. But that makes sense, right? Prices go down 3% year over year, and then you see a jump in the closed amount of sales, 4%. But at Collin County, it's like one of these areas where 
I think in 2020, 21, the median price is way, it was above 500,000 and still people were trying to get in there. So when the opportunity came and prices were cheaper, people took advantage. And typically the people that are moving into these areas are making uh, a good living. They're definitely making good money. Uh, Kaufman County, 312 median price, 7% drop from last year. 312 closed sales represent a nearly 23% increase from July. Again, you know, a uh, market drop 7%, uh, more rural areas still, but you're going to see an increase of the buyers, especially the ones who were waiting and weren't too afraid of interest rates, right? Because there was plenty of avenues to get the interest rate down, depending on who your agent was and, and the right questions you asked your lender. And then lastly, Tarrant County, it saw a median home price hit 362000 more than 2% increase. Close sales topped 2100 a more than 7% increase. So home, so the median home price actually went up 2% and then in a 7% increase in sales. Now, it is hard to really truly correlate because Tarrant County has way more homes than most of these counties, but that just shows you. Now, just because prices, just because one market is slowing down doesn't mean the other market is. And this is why every home is different and every uh Real estate deal, every time you're in or buying, you got to take it case by case because you're seeing a lot of growth happen in Tarrant County. Um, you know, not as much growth happening in Collin County, but you're seeing an increase of sales, right? And and, and the price, the difference in prices, it makes it make sense. Um, but that's going to give you the gist, right? Like we're we're really in the middle. Depending on where you're looking, is what is going to define if you are dealing with a seller's market or buyer's market. Um, because some areas it'll be advantageous for you if you're a buyer, and then some areas it's going to be more advantageous for you if you're a seller. And that makes sense, right? Supply and demand. The more the more supply, and if there's less demand, the more people will have advantage. But if there's not as much supply and there's still more demand, you're going to see more competition, prices go up and prices and, and things move quicker, which is why you see days on the market in Bedford and Flower Mound so low and the pricing still pretty pretty uh, pretty high relatively compared to the areas around them so yeah that's your little recap you know is it a buyer's or seller's market i hope this video helped you kind of give an idea i really think it's right in the middle and then now we know some of these areas so if you're in bedford or flower mound you know you're in one of the hottest markets in the in the country do you want to move or do you want to move to this area well now you kind of have an idea of how it's operating and what to expect in the future right um if you made it this far I truly appreciate you watching. My name is Trevon. I work with uh, Century 21, Mike Bowman. And if you have any questions, investor, buyer, seller, uh, don't hesitate to reach out. My contact information will be in the description below. And yeah, I really appreciate you watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Century 21 Real Estate. Move fearlessly.